Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me once again. I'm Ari Stepchansky. I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to learn a little bit more about Templator. In this tutorial, I will be explaining the concept of layer shifting. That is how to shift layers in your composition automatically as the durations of those layers change as your project gets reversioned. Now, as you can see, we've got four main layer shifting rules. And let's go through each one. So notice here, for example, this one is in point shifts to out point. And we have two layers here. The effects controls are showing the effects for templator settings applied to the comp one layer. So we can see here that the shift target for this comp layer is this footage layer here, which might change as a result of hitting preview. So you can see here that the in point of comp one shifts to the out point of the footage layer. And then it shows you also that there's this shift overlap. And that allows you to align in points to out points and out points to in points, but to have some compensation. Okay, so if we move to the next one, we've got in point shifts to in point. You can see that the footage gets updated and then the in point of comp one shifts to the in point of footage. So you can use it to align layers at their in points. Likewise, we have out point shifts to out point. And so this is when you want to align two out points of layers together. Okay, so you can see here, we've got the footage layer changing and then comp one's out point shifting the whole layer until it meets the out point of footage. And then we show the compensation. And then finally, we have out point shifts to end point. So that is conceptually what layer shifting is all about. So let's show an example of how this is applied within your project. Okay, so let's take a look at the project panel here. We've got seven imported footage files. And what I'd like to do is create a composition and then sequence these one after the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and click new composition. I'll call this render. And I will now take one of these, drag it down here and another one. So I'll take two of them. So you can see here, you know, with regards to layers, there's really some components that should be well understood before diving into this notion of shifting layers. And that is the difference between a in point and a start time and an out point and an end time. So if we take a look here, After Effects gives us these black triangles on the upper corners of the layer to signify that the in point and out point correspond to where the layer starts and to where the layer ends. So if I just click and drag one of these sides, you can see that what I'm doing here is something called trimming. I'm trimming this layer such that the footage actually begins here, but the viewer will only see it after the end point, right? So in this regard, this interaction is known as trimming. So again, you can do the same thing with the out point. You can trim the out point of the layer. But when the out point and the end time of the layer match, we see this triangle here. Okay, let's go ahead and click and drag this layer. Now I want you to see what's happening here. What we're seeing here is the end point and out point are moving in concert, as well as the start time and end time. So if I were to trim this, Notice that, you know, I can change where the start time and end time are for the layer by clicking and dragging in the ghosted area. But if I click and drag in this highlighted area, the non-ghosted area, you can see that I'm actually shifting all of the points, the start time, the end point, the out point, and the end time. So this interaction here, this is known as shifting. So when you shift a layer, you're actually shifting everything about it, all its components by the same amount. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what that means for us. So if I have a layer here and a layer there, and I'm gonna zoom out. And let's say for example, I wanna make sure that Templator always places this layer right after this one, regardless of how long this layer might be. Okay, so what I can do here is I can apply the templator settings effect to this layer. And for the sake of learning a little bit easier, let's go ahead and rename this. We'll call this one shot two. 
and this one we'll call shot one. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll click on shot two, we'll go to our effects, data clay, templator settings. And now under our time group of parameter controls, there's this other group called shift. So we open that. All right, so keep in mind that we are on, these are the controls for shot two, okay? So what we wanna do is clarify for this layer which other layer in the composition to observe or to target. So the shift target is gonna be shot one because we're setting, again, we're setting these controls on shot two. So the target of shot two will be shot one. And the endpoint of shot two should shift to the out point of shot one. So you set up a target and then you say whether or not you want the in point to shift to something or the out point to shift to something. Okay. Now notice here, if I move this over here and my templator panel is set to current state. So current state, all that means is that templator will not go and retrieve any data from any data source. It just works with the elements inside the project file. So if I go to preview, you'll see that shot two, the endpoint shifted the whole layer to the out point of shot one. So, you know, that's pretty cool because if I suddenly do this and I say, oh, you know what, I wanna cut down shot one, I can hit preview again. And because the parameter, these parameters are set up such that the endpoint of shot two is following the out point of shot one, it doesn't matter where this out point ends up. It will always follow that. We can also do not just one, two, but you can daisy chain. For example, if we had this one here, we'll call this shot three, and I'm not gonna even bother to interact with it, but I'm gonna apply the templator settings effect to it. Go to my time, go to my shift, and my shift target should be shot two, and the endpoint should shift to the out point of shot two. Okay, so now when I hit preview, I should see a stair step here. Yeah, so you can see here that uh, our video is now comprised of three layers and it doesn't matter how those layers, the durations of those layers, when they, for example, get reversioned with new footage sources, the layers will always remain intact. Okay, so for example, we've connected a data source to this project file. And if I hit preview next row, you should see this composition update with new sources and also keep this kind of sequence right here. So if I hit preview. Okay, so there are the new sources and you can see that they are stair-stepped here. One thing you might observe though is that, you know, if you want to ensure that the end times never get cut off, the, uh, the, the out point is not cutting off the end time of the layer, you can always select the layer and go to a templator settings effect. If we go to trim, you can say preserve end and preserve start. And we'll do the same thing for this one on the trim parameters, preserve start and preserve end. And we hit preview and there you go. And it looks like shot one actually does need it to get that data in there. Okay, preserve start, preserve end and preview. Okay, so there you have it. We've got three different clips here mapped to data. You'll notice also that, you know, the composition, uh, if I were to go to, for example, from this composition to the next one, it still will be 30 seconds and there will be a gap here. So if I hit preview, there you go, you see. So the shifting is working great, but the problem is that we don't want this gap here. We want our video durations to be dynamic. Well, the simple solution to that is to choose the layer that you want to demarcate as the end. So we click on shot three because I want the sequence to stop there. And then I say comp ends at out point. So for shot three, since this is checked, every time I hit next row, it's going to crop the timeline. So you can see here it's nine seconds long. If I hit preview next row again, and zoom out, now the composition is 14 seconds long. So this parameter allows you to dictate to After Effects where the composition should end. Now I'm gonna show you something pretty cool here with Templator and nested timelines. So let's go ahead and select all three of these layers and we're gonna to go to Layer, Precompose, 
I'm going to call this segments. I'm going to click OK. And now we can see that the render composition has a single layer of which is a pre-comp. So if I double click on this, there in fact are those layers that I've been working with. So if I hit preview next row here, certainly this timeline will update fine. But let's go over back to the render. So we can see that it's still at 14 seconds. And we can note here that the input, I'm sorry, the out point does not match the end time of the layer. So that's a problem. Now we can apply the templator settings effect to this layer to solve that issue. So we go to effect, data clay, templator settings, open up the time group, open up the trim group, and we're going to say preserve end. And before we get rid of these controls, we're just going to say that the comp ends at the out point. So what this tells the layer is essentially that regardless of the duration of the timeline, the internal timeline here, uh, make sure that the out point matches the end point because we're preserving the end. So if I hit preview here, we should see everything line up and be quite nice here. So here we can see the pre-composition is 24 seconds long. If I go into it itself, it's 24 seconds long. If I go here, likewise, uh, now it is 10 seconds long. And if I go into segments, it is 10 seconds long. Okay. So keep in mind that when pre-comps change duration, you can still add time-based rules to those pre-comps and other compositions. So let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and start Animation Composer. This is a great tool by none other than Mr. Horse. And I'm going to go ahead and go into my pre-comps, titles, and lower thirds. Then I'm going to go to Simple Style. I'm going to go to Text and this one right here. OK, great. So I drag this into here. And you can automatically see, I'm going to close this right here. You can see that this title right here is coming in right over the pre-comp that we have here. All right, so what we want to do actually is we want to have this title precede the segments, okay? So before we do anything, let's make sure that this layer is certainly marking the end time of the composition. So it is, that's great. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is go to the Animation Composer layer, and we're going to apply the Data Clay Templator Settings effect to it. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say, Okay, well, this guy, we want it to always be before the segment. So we want the out point to shift the layer to the where the in point of the segments layer is. So we go here to our time controls. We open up shift. Our shift target is going to be segments. And we want to shift the out point to the in point. Okay. Now, we can also set it up so that um, we can be guaranteed that no matter where this layer is, uh, the composition will start there. So we're going to go ahead and say comp starts at endpoint. And so what we should see here in the next preview when I click it is the animation composer layer going over here, the comp readjusting in terms of time as well as the segments. So let's take a look. We'll hit preview. And there we go. So now we zoom out. And sure enough, we've got now the title preceding the clip. And if I hit preview again, you can see that regardless of the duration of segments, um, everything is, is left intact. The composition render is dynamically changing its timeline. All right. Now, I'd like to introduce you to this concept of overlap. And what this allows you to do is create a transition between two clips and then maintain that transition regardless of how long or short your footage element is. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm going to double click on segments to get right in there. And I hear all my layers here. And you can see that the logic is such that the layers are aligning to the in point and out points. So it's a kind of an exact stair step. But what we want to do is add a transition. So I'm going to go ahead and hit shot to go to shift overlap, hit 15, enter. Then I'm going to go to shot three, hit 15, hit enter. And so what's going to happen here is I'm going to move this instead of next row to current state. And you'll see that these layers, in fact, do line up.
but there's going to be some overlap for where the endpoints actually move the layer to. So let's take a look. I'm going to hit preview. And sure enough, you can see that these layers are now stair step just like it was prior, but there's a 15 frame overlap here. Okay, so let's go ahead and click these two and click T on the keyboard to bring up the opacity. And here, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just apply, you know, a basic, a basic dissolve up or transparency ramp. So that's your basic classic linear dissolve, nothing special, but it's, we certainly know it's 15 frames long. So likewise here, we'll do from zero and then go to the 15 frames and then 100. Great. So now if we just kind of look at it, um, I'm going to start the work area here, end it there. You can see that we've got the dissolves happening between the clips. Okay. So that's nothing special, but when I hit preview and I go to the next row, um, you'll see that because of the shift overlap frame unit and this distance here between these keys is 15 frames, the, the transitions will remain intact. So if I go to next row and I hit preview, okay, here we go. So here's different sources, different durations, but you can see that the dissolve is still in place. Likewise here, the dissolve is in place. Now, if I go here and I hit T, you can see my keys are still there. Okay, so shift is really nice. I'm sorry, the shift overlap is really nice because it allows you to create some really cool transition work and not have to worry about, you know, the duration of a footage layer. So just to show you again, I hit next. And now here's the dissolve there and the dissolve there. Okay, so now that we have that dissolving, what we're going to go ahead and do is go back to our render. And I want to do some shift overlap here as well. So I click this one and I'm going to do, let's say, 15 frames here. And now when I hit preview, we shall see that this is now overlapping instead of aligning and butting up against each other. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the endpoint of here. I think it should be a little bit more than 15 frames. Like I think it should be a whole second maybe. So like that, preview. Okay, there we go. So we have the titles and then this comes in and then that leaves. Okay, great. So let's um, just kind of start there and end there. And let's go to next row. And certainly we know that we've got the second overlap and then the clip begins, the composition begins. So you can have timelines being changed all over your project and have layers react to those changes. And it's up to you as the After Effects artist to assign the rules for these layers to interact with each other. So if you have, for example, 200 layers, you can set that up so that 100 of those move in concert to one footage layer that's changing duration. So thanks for joining me, and I look forward to teaching you more techniques with Templator's time sculpting feature. Don't forget to click to subscribe to our channel so you can learn the latest techniques for automating your video production process. I'm Ari Stapchansky, signing off. Thanks again.